Mm. Are you ready now? I'm very ready. <laughs> because the the song says you are gonna be. Are you ready? I'm actually very ready. You, you guide every step. You con you are in control of my life. Are the steps guided? They are very guided. I'm happy to say. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Have you ever made a turn and you thought this was not the right one? Why? Because you didn't listen. Because I didn't listen to him. To, um. I think. Now I've learned that there is no wrong turn. Okay. Even when I feel like it's not the right turn, it's ultimately going to lead me where I should be. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it's long-winded. Even though it's long-winded. I mean, but I started, doesn't, that, doesn't that just make you want to kick yourself and say, but damn it, I shouldn't have? Um, I think in the moment, yes. Mm. And then once things start, you know, unfolding, you realize there is no, there is no such thing as the wrong move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dot will, the dots will eventually connect. Yeah. Yeah. And most times I've found that through the experience of whatever setback, um, you're a better person. Because in, in, in Lazy Makoti's setback, I think the corporate life was the setback. It was. You were not supposed to be there in the first place. I wasn't. I definitely wasn't. What were you doing there? I care if you're smart, smart people study this. <laughs> Um, if Owaniyana from turf, yes. you advise that, you know, this is what, this is where you should be. Yeah. And yeah, you obey. And what did you obey? What My did you parents, study? Um, I, I became an auditor. I studied at the University of Pretoria. Yeah. Um, became an auditor, went into corporate. I hated it. I absolutely hated it. So the, the whole CA route thing? Oh, I didn't go all the way there. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, was that the route? That was the route. Jeez. Yeah. And what made corporate so difficult for you? Was it because you are a creative? I think so. I think um, in part that, um, but also j just the... Ma, una le suele. She's sweating on her nose. Una le suele. It doesn't... I've been described that way sometimes. But do you? I think I do, yeah. Is it? Mm. That's nice. Stub <laughs> stubbornness is a very good character. It is. I don't yes, think I, I would be here will. if I wasn't yeah, um, yeah, it's stubborn. Strong will. It's yeah, strong will. for all those times when things weren't working out and I was like, eh, eh. Gonna Sorry, out. I had to distract you there because that <laughs> nose was sweaty. I was like, hey, before she stubbornized me, so let me just ask and get it out of the way. So yeah. here you are, mm. um, in corporate. Maybe you are a creative. Maybe mm. that's why you don't fit in. Um, I, I don't think that... Um, I think, yeah, that's part of the reason. But more than that, just like the temperature of, of corporate wasn't for me, I find. Um, what do you mean temperature? Temperament. What's up already, chef? What do you are? You know, it's every, every day is a battle. Um, and I, I prefer this side. And, and Evil Aid was confirmed when I eventually um, got to be a chef. And just how easy it was. Everything so easy. The people are easy. Um, I've found so much help from people who are already in the industry. Doors just open. But you could people be making you, you, you could be making astronomically more though. <laughs> could I? I think so. You don't know how much I make right now. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah? No, the sky is the limit, honestly. And let, let's talk about that the moment. Mm. Take me to that moment when you're like, mm -mm, this is not for me. I think are you are you are you resigning to seven notice or mm -hmm. are you just up and going? I think it's it's a lot of moments that cultim, cul, cul, ooh, culminate. culminate so cool. That's that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> culminate into, you know, okay, now I'm leaving. It's, you know, being unhappy, um, feeling like you're in the wrong teams, feeling like you, you have the wrong boss who just doesn't understand you. Um, and then the general happiness that I got once I did start giving these cooking classes, because that's how the Lazy Makuti started. Yes. Um, I just started giving cooking classes and then 
my weekends became that. So that's, the, this this was just a hobby. Actually. This was just a, basically a hobby. Yeah. Um, and on weekends, that's what I do, and that's and I found joy in it. And then when start when people started uh, paying for it. Mm. Kind of, oh, maybe this is a thing. You can yes, earn yeah, yeah. some sort of living, even though I wasn't because pricing be, right. No, sure. But but you see, the, the thing about it is, it was a much needed service. Mm, just the willingness of people to actually pay for the service, I think, then started encouraging me. Um, and then, yeah, and then I went to culinary school. You used that money to go to culinary school. Yes. So meaning dropping... The office, yes, because because office. you need to now go focus. I need to go focus, and it is it was full time. Yes, mm, I was the oldest in the class, and I get from being the youngest in the class, the bright spark, <laughs> yeah. right? One are like a crack, two <laughs> being the oldest, being the, the oldest class. in the class, sitting in the front there. Yes, mm. and that in itself is another, and 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 I want to emphasize this because with every opportunity there's a challenge and with every mm. growth there is opportunity and challenges and so on right so here you are in this class sitting in front you're the oldest challenge number one mm. because you need to deal with your mind there because you need to remind yourself why you are there in why the first place mm. number two second challenge you know how to cook mm. but they're telling you that's not how to do it <laughs> right Mommy or grandma was wrong. Yeah, there were those moments. Um, obviously, in culinary school, um, I don't want to say unfortunately, but we do learn European styles of exactly. cooking. Yeah. yeah. So that that's what I think. That's what that was one of the things I used to question. Hore, in all the years of like culinary schools, there isn't one chapter on or African Sarah, on African or South African. African yes. Yeah. And then I, I think things like that further affirm that. This thing that I want to do, there's a there, gap. there is a gap um, for our own food, for someone to talk about our own food, to put it in books, to put it on TV mm. and celebrate it. So in this school, here you are. Mm. Um, are you then, do you find yourself having to face the bully and the bully, I mean it in a good sense, mm. because at the office it was the boss mm. or the wrong team. Mm. In the culinary school is the teacher, right? Mm. And now you are bringing the South African Arguments. lazy makoti mm. out of you into the dish. Yeah. Now they have to taste it. What are the challenges there? Then? Um, I think at, at school, honestly, I had to obviously follow the rules. So I'm here to learn. I'm getting marked on certain outcomes. And I had to cook, you know, don't do European dishes. Isn't this the problem? It with is. our education system though it really is i'm i think there's it's time to 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 go back to the drawing table um it's actually really crazy that God, this year there isn't anyone that's saying yeah. there's something wrong with the syllabus why does it not speak to where we are you can't be in south africa learning exactly the same things as someone in in france and um for me, it's also like national pride. How mm. do you compete with a French person cooking yes. French food? And their language. That's not how my grandma makes make, makes it. No matter yes. how well you make it, that's not how their grandma makes it. And their grandma is French. There's, you can't argue. So it 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 just goes. It's it's national pride actually. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start here. Yes. Do you see where I'm going? I see. <laughs> cooking classes mm -hmm. people started following that yes. and supporting you mm -hmm. when you went to culinary school there you are sitting there's no book that speaks your language mm. now that you've qualified and graduated you realize there's no school mm. that teaches the way you mm. know how to cook yeah um, yeah, so then I continue with the cooking classes. Initially, when I started, I would do house calls. So I'd come to your house, teach you how to cook. Um, yeah, when I think back to that time, I can't believe the like how brave this person was. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a whole different person. Yes. I can't recognize her. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I we celebrate her though. <laughs> we do. 
I would go to people's houses, teach them how to cook. Um, and then I realized that um, it, it's not an efficient way to use my time. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm teaching one person for these hours, um, charging this much. If I did a bigger group, that yes. would be you know, a more effective use of my time. So that's what I did. Mm. Um, I would book out a studio and then people would come and then yep. we'd cook together. Yeah. Uh, this is something I continue to do today. Um, you know, this like obviously, you know, COVID because it is hard to yeah. enforce, you know, social distancing and mask in a hot kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still don't get my point. Your point is there is a need for a lazy mapkoti culinary school. There is a yeah. need for a textbook. There is a need to rewrite the drawing board. It's you. It's you, Kibo Chef in D, Kibo, yes. your crew of chefs. Mm-hmm. Isn't it time? So what we're doing now is the building blocks. Okay. So we're starting by collecting information. I mean, this is why we write books. Yes. Books are, are largely a vehicle to collect information, yes. um, to preserve it. Yes. Um, and yeah, these are the building blocks. I'm sure that one day, I know that one day we will open a school because there is that need. Yeah. Yeah. There's one problem, though. The problem is? African cuisine is mm. not summer-friendly. Morao. Why? 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 So most European food has had to, has not had to evolve, but has been given the platform to evolve. Okay. So they had a chance to take their onion soup, which was a simple soup, yeah. like a poor man's soup, yes. and they've elevated it now. Just like the Russians with their beetroot uh, soup. Yeah. 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 Now, cuisine of the world. They've had that chance to do that. We yeah. haven't because of you know our history, bo colonization, bo you know all of that has stifled creativity. Yes. Um, and now this generation of chef has a chance to do that, mm. to take our food, our ingredients, budi saga, budi roibos, and elevate them. Litona di you know, yeah. five star Adaptable. and fine dining. Mm. Yes. Mm. So it, that, that's what I mean by these are the building blocks. So right now, I feel like more than any other generation, this generation of chef, of black chef, embraces who they are and we're finding a way to elevate. Mm. I don't want to say elevate because it sounds like making better and yeah, that's yeah. not what I mean. Yeah. But I mean um, that it's a different time. Uh, we eat different. So culture has to uh, adapt. Yes. And, and so should our food yeah. so that it's, we're able to take it into the next generation. Oh, yeah. So that's what we're doing. Ari Lennox, pressure. I just love the song. I love the video. I love the video more than I love the song. Oh, under pressure. <laughs> no, not at all. Of what, Lauren? <laughs> In the beginning, a little bit, um, because obviously with the success of, of the first book, yeah. <sighs> I, Lauren Hill, ne, can you understand? Why? Why she never released the second <laughs> album. <laughs> I get it. You do. <laughs> I understand. The best description ever. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Mohao Sisheni here, a.k.a. The Lazy Magoti. You are listening. You are listening to my top 10 at 10 with Tibos. On the street, on, on, on the air. Indeed it is. Do we have summer-friendly African food? We do. We do. In my book, there is. Okay. I'm going to show you this so- rainbow sorghum salad. So it's sorghum, sorghum ki, what you I've got a sorghum ki na nem kombo tina. <laughs> It's what you used to make ding, combo tea. Oh, yeah. Mabele. Um, mabele, mabele, mabele. Yes. So you just cook it and you'd use it how you, you use like couscous. And then ah. bulk it up with vegetables like um, tomatoes, red onion, cucumber. Just make it nice and summer and fresh. Lots and of herbs. Colorful. Colorful. Yes. Filling. Mm. Mm. I jamar. <laughs> No, nix. <laughs> so that sorghum salad will be a salad. It will be a salad. Do yes. we have to add meat? I mean, you know, you know Africans, do we? Do you? I'm asking. <laughs> 
if you want to, of course you can make it a whole meal, but you can enjoy it iliwani just on its own. Yeah. Yeah. And then with that particular, because this one is hosting, mm. um, hosting, and the f- let, let, let's reposition this. Yes. L- the first book was more about, this is how, this is, I'm showing you your way to your kitchen. Mm-hmm. So basics. The basics. Yes. Now this is hosting, so therefore more than four people. Mm-hmm. Are you then saying even the sizes in there, is it really for more than four people? Mm-hmm. Or this is just the basic of how to make and you can then quadruple or double or whatever? Mm. You can uh, double, quadruple as you want because we don't have the same sizes of family. Yeah. Even between two people, that's still hosting. Um, four mm. people, six people, ten people, twenty people. That's yeah, still yeah, yeah. hosting. And and um, if you are hosting someone, you still want to make it an occasion. You want to make it special, yeah, no matter yeah. what the size. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I thought about. And I think um, once everything has passed and we can get back to actually hosting yes. the summer, hopefully, hopefully they don't lock us down. We hopefully can then we reclaim live. summer. Yes. And have some sorghum. Yeah, and and have people in our homes and be able to do all the things that we love. What else do you have? Um, What else? How come, uh, Morao, we don't think fish? Why do inlanders, and I want to say inlanders, Mm. Gauteng, Limpopo, Free State, all inlanders, Mm. when we say summer, fish is only set aside for Easter. Actually, if you think about it, mm. yeah, yeah, sacrilege to have <laughs> red meat, kinagoya, fish. Mm. Why? Maybe because we're so far from the sea. Yeah. I actually don't know, but I think um, a lot of how we eat is learned from you know your family. Yes. So maybe it's time that we come up with new traditions. You gave me a fact about fish in yes. Gauteng. Actually, in Gauteng, we get some of the best fish because when they when they catch the fish wherever in Cape Town in Mars, it comes here first. So the first, the freshest comes here first. So you're actually getting the best. So we should actually be eating more fish than we do. Leguil. <laughs> what do you have? Um, I have a rice stuffed fish. So it's a whole fish. Mm-hmm. It looks beautiful. You know, when you're hosting, the one thing you want is for people to look at the food and want to dig in. Yes. Take a picture first. Yes. And want to dig in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're cooking the whole fish. Which fish? Any fish, be it snook, yellowtail, oh, okay. whatever fish you like. Lebabur fish. <laughs> whatever fish you like, we're cooking it. Um, we're stuffing it um, either with some rice or some couscous um, that we also cooked with um, red onion and some peppers. Then you just stuff that fish. It goes in the oven 12 minutes. You have your beautiful fish. Because I get alone, Rana Inlanders, the minute you say grill the fish or eat the raw fish, bra, the first thing we go for get apricot jam. Because that's a scary learning. So now let's come up with new ideas to still enjoy all of the, these food. Can you be wrong in the kitchen? Is there something that doesn't go with something? What, what is the one thing you must never put in fish as a rule of thumb? As a rule of thumb, honestly, I think not enough people experiment, mm. especially you know our yes, people, because yes. you learn how to make something this way, and that's how you're gonna make it. All because we always we learned to save money, mm. and you must use what you have. Oscar saying, Oscar Raluka I think that's where it comes, <laughs> comes from. from. Yeah, and also because um, we weren't maybe exposed to a whole lot of um, ingredients. So, um, yeah, so now is the time for us to experiment a little more. The only place I would say don't experiment is when you're baking. Baking is a science. You must follow the recipe. Exactly how it is. Exactly. Don't deviate from it. Exactly how it is. That thing, ne? How many with cooking? You can still save it. Too much salt. You can add a potato. That potato will absorb all that salt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, You can play around with it. Not with baking. Not with baking. And what I what I mean by golden rules is, for instance, you can't cook with archer. Can. <laughs> Who's cooking with archer? Are you telling a secret? Have you tried cooking with archer, Malumi? I'm leaving you a copy of my book. No. <laughs> Uh, can you put you can't put 
a chicken stock in beef? You can actually. Oh, there we go. You see? You, you, you see? Why? Um, so, a stocko, I think many people will be referring to the cube. Yes. So, I mean that, that liquid stock. Okay. So, I think that's also the other thing. Just teaching our people, um, to your point, that we've, we've been taught to save money. Um, and therefore, some of the ingredients that we use are maybe not the best. Um, so, if you have a choice between, you know, a beef cube stock yeah. and the one A that you can pour, mm. use the one that you can pour. Because that one is, is just packed with salt, like a lot of sodium. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's not necessarily great. Yeah, yeah. So it's also that, I think that's also why we write cookbooks. Okay. So just teach people um, how to use better ingredients in a better way. Um, in the one chapter, Sunday lunch, we also do how to cook vegetables properly. Because mm. that's a thing. Mm. You're, you're buying all this produce that is great, but you're killing it. You're cooking it for two hours. Eish. There are no nutrients now when you eat it. It tastes horrible it looks horrible and then you're forcing your kids to have it lazy makoti is my uh, guest we talk about her new book hosting with the lazy makoti and we're talking about um you know african food that is summer friendly mm. <clears throat> talk about that how can we make banana by south africa <laughs> majita majimbos bokabadia yes to eat salad I am. I firmly believe um, men should also be invited into the kitchen. Okay. Uh, and I think my generation and maybe slightly younger yeah. are doing a really great job. Okay. We just did. Um, I just had my launch day before yesterday in Pretoria. Okay. And there were young couples there. Nah. Oh, brother, with Lily, their wives. And they got up and they said, you know, I cook with my wife. And it was just so exciting to yes. see. Yes, yes, yes. Young men. Um, who are learning that the kitchen is not gendered. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it's much easier for a guy who also cooks, who's interested yes. in what they are putting into their bodies. Yes. Um, it, it's easier to I have a little malumar. <laughs> Those are the converted. Malumar. Exactly. Why <laughs> Weimar. I think if, if they invite him What is it that is kitchen? missing in a salad that does not, it's not so appealing to him? What, what, what have you learned? What, what is it? If, you, if there was a problem in this country, it's a <laughs> pandemic. The lazy man could do for a tender. <laughs> Solve this it. thing. What would it be? I think it's also um, when it comes to salads and vegetables they have to sell themselves they have to market so they have to look beautiful mm. for you to be interested in eating them it, I think it would be hard for anyone to to deny a plate that looks summery and fresh and delicious mm. so I think we need to learn to make food that looks great that I think that will encourage I'll give you my perspective on mm. why salads are not such a favorite what's the perspective because let us how for joy for <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem though. That's the problem. Um instead of that lettuce, egg I'm carrying the same like yes. a waterberg lettuce. Now Honali the rocket. Yes. You can use baby spinach instead. Mm -hmm. So just finding interesting ways to make your food interesting. And why don't you just cut it in sizes <laughs> that we can enjoy it? Why don't you give a page? <laughs> um, it's the song that he sang with this choir. I think it's the Soweto Youth Choir. The Mzansi I'm, Youth Choir. Yeah. Mzansi Youth Choir. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Why something so? I think he's the most talented South African. Yeah. Right now. Ever. Yeah. Can he sing for you? <laughs> You'll cook. He'll sing. I'll t if you can organize, I'll take it. Hi, man. Or must I'm he, kidding. Must he cook too? No. I get it, not about Bella. Oh. Yeah. Now I thought maybe he must cook too. He'll just say. <laughs> Why is she blushing when I'm asking such a simple <laughs> question? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, okay. Well, you... <laughs> anyway. It is kind of from that one on the street on the air. The Lazy McCourty, the book is out hosting with. The lazy but good. Yes. Get it. You are listening to my top 10 at 10 with Tibos. On the street, on, on the air.
It is Car 959. We're on the street, we're on the air, and we are everywhere, like in Denmark. Um, uh, our friend and fellow brother, Patrick Mabena, says, T, I'm listening to you all the way from uh, Denmark. Can Mugau, a.k.a. the Lazy Makoti, teach our African chefs here in Denmark? Mm. How to make authentic African dishes. I would. There's an invite right to. there. I would absolutely love to. We must just arrange for a name, but I'm so game. Because that's a beautiful opportunity. Because uh, the diaspora, mm. we are everywhere. We are everywhere. And the last thing, you know, I think the most painful thing <clears throat> about being away from home is not finding something that just says home. Mm. And everybody um, has that privilege. So the Chinese, yes. have, wherever they go, yes. um, you can find jollof even, rice. Even in hotels. Even in hotels. Exactly. Even in hotels. They catered for everywhere they go. But if you're a South African, no. what about you? Nothing. Amara, we can't blame the rest of the world when even we don't do it. So yes. If you're in the heart of Santon, mm-hmm. where do you go to eat food that is reflective of you or your heritage? Exactly my point. That's why earlier on, when there's a guy who said, do we even have African desserts that you'll mm. say this is an African dessert? And I said the first time, refreshingly so, mm. I went to Moeng, mm. Moeng SA, right here in Rosebank. Yes. African restaurant, beautiful. Nice. And then dessert, Nice. With ice cream. Yes. Listen, yes. the tastiest thing you've ever had. I mean, don't, ooh, don't get me started. <laughs> and the welcome drink, Khmer. Oh, amazing. So this I'm saying is you need to be, and you're right. So you need to actively look for it. Look for it. Mm. Otherwise, you're going to end up having what you, and then what, what happened? And the most frustrating thing is you go to a restaurant in South Africa. Written in French, you're like, eh, Mara, eh, la language is French, eh, he had body. Wanguija. What's next? For the lazy market. Because there's no question we are growing. Mm. Hence the question will the lazy ever drop? As in, I be active in yana. That's a draft for you. But what's next? Um, next is well. Now, obviously, we be, we're busy promoting the book. Um, mm. um, I'm excited that this book is going international. Um, oh, next year, we're launching in Dubai and um, the UK mm. and a couple of other places. Um, and then after the book is a home line. Oh. Hey. That's the ultimate goal of the Lazy Market. Well, obviously, for, for the book, the recipes, the food mm. to reach all over the world, all over yeah, the continent. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think the next thing is a home a home line. So yeah. the Lazy Market products, merchandising is the way to go. So why did you leave Limpopo and Gauteng and go to Cape Town? <laughs> she thought I'm done. Why you got anger in that? Really? <laughs> Um, opportunities, I think opportunities. Cape Town. Yes. Um, so the food industry in South Africa, or at least the food media in no, actually the food industry in South Africa lies in Cape Town. Is it? Um, some of the best chefs, the the best restaurants, the bo- the best food stylists. I mean, in South Africa, actually, if you're doing a cookbook, you're probably producing it in Cape Town, wow. shooting it there. Some of the best props, the best produce, the best food. Like, Food is, is in Cape sure, Town. Sure. So yeah, because Lynn and I have to of keep course. learning, keep growing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and be with the best. And be with the best and learn from the best. And oh my gosh, am I learning? Just this past year and a bit, um, I've learned so, so much. Hmm. And I, I can't wait. I'm, I am obviously slowly applying what I've learned, but yeah, I can't wait for the next couple of years. I'm excited about the future. There's a lot that she's not saying. But all I'm telling you is that one of the big chains has um, employed the Lazy Makoti to come and sort of design taste mm. and be an architecture of taste. Mm. Yeah. 
if you if you think about it that's that's one other key component of what we eat and how we eat is is it available in the stores it starts mm. with that grocery basket what yes. you're able to put in it yeah. so if there isn't you know you're living in Gauteng and there isn't morogo on the shelf obviously yes. you're not going to eat it cuz where are you going to get it mm. unless you go And even to think it. about making it is mm. already cumbersome yeah it's 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 just too much it's just there's just too much work yeah. in eating it if you think about how africans eat and what they eat a lot of us eat goat meat mm. so that's you and me here in south africa mm. that's Afri- africa as a whole but why why is it not available in grocery stores mm. so that is mm. actually a very key component that influences how we eat how easy it is to walk in a store and find produce that speaks to us yeah yeah yeah, yeah. congratulations on that thank you because i feel you are now at the what's it called the input mm. sometimes we just buy sometimes we just buy what is available True. right but you are now right at the beginning of it all so that by the time we buy it we feel we were represented in buying it that's why we that's where we have to be oh yeah that is where we no, have to be congratulations well done yeah. well done thank you we can only wish you the best Thank you. Always great seeing you. Always love seeing your work. You. Keep doing what you're doing, girl. Thank you. I will. And thank you so much for the support throughout the years, you know. I think the support is what gets you here so far. Yeah. Um yeah, it's it's it would be so easy to give up along the way, but yeah, yeah. yeah I always say if there was ever a commission of inquiry into like the goodness of people, yeah. put me on the stand. Yeah. I have seen and felt it. No better way to end it. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, keep shining. Thank you.